All right, so let's talk about the Krebs cycle, also known as a citric acid cycle, also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Yes, there are a bunch of names for this one, but it's actually not as difficult as it seems because we'll be breaking down each of the enzymes that result in our reactants and our products. So first off, we need to start off with our pyruvate. Now, if you remember from glycolysis, we're taking one of those glucose molecules and creating two pyruvates. Now, to start off our entire reaction of our Krebs cycle, we need to create acetyl-CoA. Now, how do we do that? Well, pyruvate first needs to enter the mitochondria, and it does this through some transporters like a pyruvate transporter, and then there's a reaction of pyruvate decarboxylation. So by the word decarboxylation, I mean, you can obviously tell that we are going to be losing a carbon dioxide. So decarboxylation. So to do that, to create our pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, we need an enzyme known as pyruvate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase or you know, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Either way, we need pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now, if we remember from glycolysis, and this is actually an easy thing to know, is that when you have a dehydrogenase, you're basically taking an NAD+, plus and you are turning that into an NADH and a proton, or an H+. Plus. So, what really happens in this reaction when we have NAD plus and then we have NADH and an H. So dehydrogenase, the hydro, we're basically taking away a hydrogen. And this NADH, what it will do, let's model as NADH or NADH plus. So NADH plus will take away a hydrogen. So a hydrogen is, you know, the first element on periodic table. So we're just going to have this guy and then we'll have like a me create this little guy over here. So we're going to have an electron. So a hydrogen has one proton, one electron. That's this is what a hydrogen looks like. Now what NAD plus does is it will take one of these hydrogens as a whole, and this will result in NADH plus. Now how do we get rid of that positive sign? Well, to do that, and I'll create a, another one of my hydrogen hydrogens over here. So to do that, we actually need to take a electron. Now taking this electron from the hydrogen will result in our hydrogen or just a proton since hydrogen without an electron will just literally become a proton. So this will result in NADH and our proton over here. So this is what occurs when we have our NAD plus going NADH and a proton. And this is why NADH is considered an electron carrier because it's taking that electron from our previous hydrogen. And when we look at going to the electron transport chain, it'll be transferring that electron to create a proton concentration gradient. Now, since this is a decarboxylation reaction, we're obviously also going to lose CO2. So we're going to be losing CO2. And to create our acetyl-CoA, well, we need, and let me change my colors over here, we need a coenzyme, we need CoA. So CoA plus our NAD plus will result in NADH, our H, and our CO2, which will create acetyl-CoA. Now, since this is a decarboxylation reaction, we are, and I'll just model our carbons just like we did the glycolysis, just like two, and we'll have our CoA right there. So this is what um, sort of modeling what our acetyl-CoA would look like. And to go to citrate to create our citrate, we need oxaloacetate. So oxaloacetate is just going to be a four carbon molecule. And our four carbon molecule plus our acetyl-CoA, this is going to result in citrate. Citrate is going to be a six carbon molecule, three, four, five, six. Now the enzyme that performs this action and let's let's actually go for green for this one. So let me create a little bit of room over here. So the enzyme that creates this reaction is known as citrate. C citrate synthase. Citrate synthase. So citrate synthase, we actually need the input of water. We need water in this reaction. This will result in our coenzyme 
being cleaved off and this creates our citrate. Now, moving on from our citrate to our cis aconitate, we need a new enzyme. So I'm going to color code this, let's go with this guy over here. Now let me scroll down over here. So we need an aconitase, aconitase, which we will be losing in a water and then we need aconitase again, aco, oh, aco, Nitase, and we need water for this one to create isocitrate. So basically, this reaction of citrate going to cis aconite going to isocitrate is just um, releasing water and then putting water in. So we know that. And now this is where we get to our more important enzymes. This is actually what defines our Krebs cycle. So the enzyme that I'm referring to over here, this is going to be known as our isocitrate dehydrogenase. So our color for dehydrogenase is this blue. So we have isocitrate, citrate, and then we have dehydrogenase, dehydrogenase. Now, as you guessed, we know with our dehydrogenases, we're going to or dehydrogenases, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not here for the grammar, but we have our NAD plus and we're going to be turning this into NADH plus RH plus. And we're also going to be releasing CO2 as the byproduct for this reaction. So a couple of things you have to know for isocitrate is that this reaction will not or this enzyme will not be able to, I guess you say operate if there is ATP. So if there is a sufficient amount of ATP, our isocitrate dehydrogenase will not be will not commence with the reaction. But if we have, let's say we have calcium, and we have ADP, well, then our reaction will occur. And this is uh, pretty much the same for um, our next enzyme over here. So we have our alpha ketoglutarate, and we're going to need another dehydrogenase, but this is going to be an alpha keto, I'm just going to put keto G, but you know, guys, it's just going to be alpha keto glutarate. And then this is going to be a dehydrogenase and how about dehydro. Same exact thing. Since we know we have a dehydrogenase, we're taking this NAD plus, this results in NADH and our hydrogen ion. And as a byproduct, we are going to be releasing CO2. All right, so now that we know that, and now actually, I kind of forgot to label our carbons over here. So over here, for isocitrate, we will still have our six carbons over here. And for our ketoglutarate over here, since we lost a carbon dioxide, we actually have a five carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. And now let's talk about succinyl CoA, succinyl coenzyme A. So over here, we are going to have for our final reaction, we're going to have four carbons and we'll have that coenzyme. So I'll do one, two, three, four, and then coenzyme A over here. This is our succinyl CoA and our enzyme that creates our alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA is going to be our alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase like we talked about. And over here, there's actually an important reaction that occurs in which we will have a thioester formation. That is how we get our coenzyme A back into this sort of conversation. We have a thioester formation, which allows our coenzyme to bind. So that's another important reaction that occurs with our alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is that we have a thioester formation. Now, how do we go on to and I actually I forgot what we need to um, sort of mention is that succinyl CoA having a succinyl CoA or NADH will not allow our alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase to continue with this reaction. So let's say we have a succinyl, we have a sufficient amount of succinyl CoA. And we have an A dh a sufficient amount of nadh then this will result in an inhibition of our enzyme so the reaction will not occur and if we do have calcium oh, if we have calcium and we have adp our enzyme will continue on with our process now let's talk about how we get from our let's see what color we want to use let's go to purple so let's say we want to go from succinyl coa to succinate well to do that we actually need gdp so gdp is going to result in g 
ATP. And in doing so, we're actually going to lose our coenzyme A to produce succinate. So now let's use our little drawing over here. So now we're just going to have four carbons since we lost that uh, coenzyme A in this reaction for our succinate. And then going from our succinate to our fumarate, this is when we need another important enzyme that this one is actually going to be part of our electron transport chain. So uh, let me label these arrows over here. So we have a dehydrogenase. So we're going with our um, color over here. So we have we're going to have our succinate dehydrogenase. I'll put dehydro and instead of using NAD plus and resulting in NADH, we're actually going to have FAD. And this is going to result in FADH2. Now, there's something very important you have to know about succinate dehydrogenase, which this is actually complex two of the electron transport chain. And this FADH2 is enzyme bound. So unlike NADH, this FADH2 isn't allowed to freely move around the uh, mitochondria. It's actually bound to that succinate dehydrogenase, which it'll transfer and move on to ubiquinone, which we'll talk about in our electron transfer chain video. But basically, you have to understand that FADH2, the reduction of FAD to FADH2 is going to be enzyme bound. So this FADH2 will stay enzyme bound to the succinate dehydrogenase. And this from our succinate to our fumarate is done by our succinate dehydrogenase. And let's move on to our malate. So this is when and let's change my color to let's go with this guy over here. So we are going to need a fumarase fumarase for this guy and we need an input of water to create our malate. So over here, let me draw our little carbon. So we're still gonna have four carbons over here. And then our malate is going to have four carbons as well. And then to go from our malate to oxaloacetate, we need malate dehydrogenase. So I'll put dehydro, we need malate dehydrogenase in which we'll have NAD plus and this is going to result in NADH plus our proton and this will create oxaloacetate. So with our, our most important enzymes, I guess you say for our Krebs cycle is citrate synthase, then we have isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. And suc succinate dehydrogenase is also an important one because this is actually part of our complex two in our electron transport chain. And over here, the a couple of things that can inhibit our citrate synthase are going to be NADH, then we might have succinyl, succinyl CoA, uh, citrate as well, if we have sufficient amount of citrate and also a TP. And what will promote our citrate synthase to continue on with this reaction is a D.